so she already know it is now April, coming up on the middle of April, which means that slow period at the start of the year where we don't get too much news, we're finally starting to come out of it. People are looking forward to the E3 season. I know E3 is dead, but you know what we're talking about, June. When the shit goes down and we get more news, not just for Sonic, but for gaming in general. And of course, we've got a big piece of news to talk about today, because the Sonic, or the Sonic pages or whatnot, are going ham on this Yield Shadow shit. they got a whole bunch of trailers and shit, so we're going to go through that. We've got to talk about the Knuckles TV show as well. Technically, the Sonic movie as well, we have to talk about that. And we got to talk about... I guess Izuka's got a brand new interview. Papa's got a brand new ramble. So <laughs> we're going to get to all this right now. But subscribe to the channel already. Please make sure to subscribe. Okay, so yes, Year of Shadow. The official Sonic Twitter posted this. It says, you control your own path. Stay fearless. And they got a whole trailer here. I don't know if the music is copyrighted or not. So quite frankly, I don't really want to play the music at like a loud volume. But it's just some, it's like a trap beat in the background. We'll quickly run through the trailer again. I already watched it because it was nothing crazy. It was like, they were showing some bikes and shit. Like, you know, check this out. There's like drawings and shit. It's just a little promo piece of artwork. You can see Sonic approved with the Chili Dog. You got Shadow there. But there's a reason I'm showing this show. I wasn't going to show it originally, but there's a reason I'm going to show it. It's because someone has got a little theory that it confirms that Amy is going to be in movie three. So because of that, we will show the trailer, and when we get to that point, I'll, I'll explain it later. But yeah, it seems like just an, a little animation mixed with some live action shit, just to hype you up for the Year of Shadow website, which we're going to look at the website in a sec. There's a whole new website. There's a lot of things going on. So yeah, they're riding bikes. It looks, you know, it looks okay. But well, we're going to get into the details of this in a second. But yeah, a little trailer. You probably missed the thing that I'm, I'm even about to talk about, but we'll see it in a sec. There it is. There it is. I didn't notice it as well. So, yeah. Fearless Year of Shadow. You can see the logo here. It's looking pretty hype. There's a secondary trailer, which is a bit more interesting. I'm going to pause my music for this one, because this one's a bit more interesting. You got that I am all of me? Look at that. Oh, look at this. That's what's up. Oh. Oh, fearless. Year of Shadow. Got a whole, yeah, that's that's more like it, man. This is a better trailer. This is the better trailer. But yes, the reason why we need to talk about that, there's a website. There's a website. We're going to get into that. Don't worry. Gamer Guide believes that Amy is going to be in movie three because of that screenshot in the trailer. If you can see, there's a screenshot here. Apparently, the orange one is supposed to be Shadow. The blue one with the hedgehog thing is obviously Sonic. Yellow being Tails. Red being Knuckles. So the pink suggests that it would be Amy. I mean, it feels like a reach, but at the end of the day, it's an SA2 movie, right? And they have everyone that was major in SA2 confirmed except for Amy and Rouge. One of them bitches gonna make it into the cut, right? I don't know why they're not bringing both. Rouge should be in there, especially with the Knuckles dynamic. But if it's just Amy, that's a bit sad. I mean, if I had to pick between Amy and Rouge for an SA2 movie, I would pick Rouge. But, you know, ideally we get both of them, right? I'm just saying. But Gamer Guy's got a little theory. I thought I'd mention it. So I could be pointing towards Amy coming into the movie and not so much Rouge. So that's an interesting point. So we can keep an eye on that. But the websites. they got a whole website. Fearless Year of Shadow. So far, there's nothing crazy on it yet. You can see here about in 2024, we're bringing Shadow into the light with a new fan celebration campaign, Fearless Year of Shadow. While we ran with our successful Fast Friends Forever program last year, I don't even know what that is. Apparently it was successful. We our new annual campaign this year celebrates what it means to be fearless and embracing your inner shadow. Break barriers, be unafraid, be at your best, and do it all with a powerful confidence. Yeah, that sounds like the opposite of me. Um, but don't just take it from us. We're gonna sit from the ultimate life form himself as we take you on an action-packed ride throughout the year filled with countless energetic moments. Throughout the year, energetic moments, hang tight and check out the news section below for updates as the fearless your shadow unfolds. So we've got the news here. They say there's a custom shadow inspired motorcycle. So those of you who like to ride motorbikes, like maybe you can cop this. I don't know. They've got like a tour site for it. And then obviously we've got Sonic X Shadow Generations. We know that's happening. We've got some Lego shit for those of you who still play with Legos. And then Sonic Dash, Sonic Forces shit, if, if you care about that. And then Sonic Speed Cafe, the official Sonic Speed restaurant, or Sonic themed restaurant, which I don't think is in the UK, so I don't give two shits. 
and then the Sonic Symphony, which I went to see that, and that was pretty cool. And yeah, it's the same thing looped over. And you got the media, which shows the trailer we already saw. There was some Lego trailer before that people were hyping up. I skimmed through it, not on YouTube. I didn't skim through it on my channel, but yeah, it was some Roger and some other shit. Kirk Thornton was in it, so they they still got him as well. Yay. Highlights. And we can see, like, the Dark Rider. Look at this. So it's like the stats of, like, the motorbike. So this looks pretty cool. Originally a standard issue motorcycle used by the military group Gun. Uh, only gained the name Dark Rider after Shadow modified it so it could compete in the All-Stars Grand Prix. I guess announced All Stars Racing and then games that Shadow's involved with. We've obviously got Sonic X Shadow Generations, and that's the only thing that is here because Shadow is not in Sonic Superstars because they put classic Sonic in a suit. That's not included. That doesn't count. Shadow's not in the game. Don't put him on the Year of Shadow page if you don't have the balls. You have, the, you have the cojones to actually put Shadow in a classic game because he's not classic. He was born just as he was, as if Sonic morphed into modern Sonic. Like. When did he grow the green eyes? I don't know how that works. If it's the same Sonic, when did he grow green eyes? I'm just saying. This whole canon shit is bullshit. But you've put him there as if he's in the game, but he's not in the game. So why is Superstars here? He shouldn't. It shouldn't be here, okay? Anyway, right? This is the motorcycle trailer. You can see a 30 second little loop just showing the cool little motorbike. I mean, look, if I rode motorbikes, I would be copying one of these. I'm not gonna lie to you, right? And if I was rich and I didn't ride motorbikes, I'd have one just to have one in my you know, 20 car garage or whatever the fuck, like, this is just, this is just fly, okay, who wouldn't want one of these, right, imagine busting it down the road with one of these, but all the roads in the UK are fucking 20 miles an hour now, so, you're gonna be going slow most of the time anyway, like, man, every fucking road is 20 now, they used to be 30 easily, now it's like 20 everywhere, it's, it's a fucking mess, anyway, yeah, that's the Shadow Motorcycle, and then Tail Channel posted an artwork for Fearless Year Shadow, but for some reason that shit washed out because Sonic Stadium posted the same thing, and that shit is vibrant. I don't know which one is the original one or which one has been bumped up or bumped down in terms of vibrancy. I prefer this one, but I don't know which one was the original one. They said that they were sent these by Sega. These are renders that don't look horrible. These are renders that are official, that don't look like shite, right? They don't look shite. This is something that we have to commend because Sega is usually not good at making renders that aren't shite and cringe and generic looking. So to see one that is official, not shite, not generic looking, it's pretty interesting. The only thing I'd critique here is that Shadow is smiling. That nigga don't smile. Like, she's always frowning. Like, I mean, he's a bit too happy here, right? Especially next to Sonic. Maybe he's happy because Classic Sonic died in the explosion back there. <laughs> it's like, we got rid of that cunt. Get rid of him. Too much 2D sucks. Or some other cool thing that Shadow would say. I don't know. Anyway, that was pretty cool. Now, I think we've covered all of that. IGN, it says the cast of Knuckles weigh in on what it's really like working with, with the Red Alien of Kingdom Wars. So a little exclusive behind the scenes clip for the Knuckles TV show, which is looking hype, by the way, minus Wade, but we're still gonna take a look at this. I love working with Knuckles. He's the most professional actor I've ever met. He knows his lines. Oh, so they're pretending lines, Knuckles is an actor for the show. And the phone number for your high school drama teacher in case he wants to blame someone. Okay. What are you doing? He takes his job very seriously. Cardi! That's a good thing, but. Also kind of scary. <laughs> he's very mad. Tails? When it comes down to it, he's as normal as any other all red alien animal hybrid warrior. Okay, then. He has no sense of humor at all. <laughs> I, do not laugh. I think he's hilarious. Huh. Stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. He's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like a bully. Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> Uh, not. There's grapes at craft services, grapes in his trailer, grapes for lunch, grapes for second lunch. The grapes are delicious. Doing the fight scenes with him is interesting, takes things a little bit too far. I mean, he launched my stunt double right across the room with just a little. I like this. I do not make jokes, I make warriors. The show's gonna be hype! Hype! Okay, yep, yeah, that's looking pretty fire. That's pretty much all the main news for those of you who just want the main news. But there's one more thing we're going to cover. If you want to stick around for that, we can stick around. It's not. I don't know if there's any real news in this. That's why I'm saying if you don't want to stick around for it, don't stick around. It says here, Sonic Team's Takashi Azuka details his 32-year career at Sega, including his early days placing enemies in Golden X3, designing Nights into Dreams and Sonic Adventure, and the day he learned the Dreamcast was shutting down. Watch the interview here. And it's actually... a. 12 minute interview so like again if you don't want to see this then you can leave because i can't guarantee that there'll be news in this but i wanted to take a look at this interview so i figured i'll watch it 
and give my reaction for those of you who want to see what Izuka has to say. And maybe there'll be some interesting tidbits in here. I don't know, but let's find out. Join Sega Night 2? Okay. There were only big game companies. Yeah, well, Indie was it wasn't there yet. They didn't have the tools yet. Too expensive. Indie really took off in the 2010s. The only game companies you could think of were Sega, Namco, or Konami. Nintendo was in Kyoto. Oh, okay. I was about to say, where's Nintendo? So you could have been working at Nintendo if they were closer. Pac-Man, classic. Invaders. Is that like the Space Impact shit? Love video games so much I bought them as soon as they were released. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. At that time, I was only thinking of having fun playing games for the sake of playing them. Right. He spent most of his allowance on them. I mean, was he? he was born in the 70s, right? So, he was like in his early 20s at that point? Before that? Maybe a bit younger? He wanted to be a manga artist? Because I loved imagining stories and characters and turning them into pictures. Okay. This is the Sonic intro for... Origins? I, I forgot which one it is. One of the classic recent things. Uh, I think it's Origins. It's not Mania. Okay, became acquainted with a new medium, video games. So all the stuff he wanted to draw, he wanted to he basically put into the games. I think is what he's, he's what he's saying. That's nice. I chose the game industry because it was a new medium I thought I could become a part of. Our Lord and Savior. So they just dropped Sonic One when he was applying to work there. So you bought Sonic One before working at the company. I feel that. I feel that. The first thought I had was, this is an amazing game. Then I got to Labyrinth Zone and realized I was wrong. I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> I still love Sonic 1. I spent several weeks debugging Sonic 2 right after I started. So they were basically far into it then. They were releasing a few weeks and there wasn't enough QA mem- they were, they were, Of course there wasn't, Sega. Of course there wasn't. <laughs> Izuka came in, they were already rushing. Ugh. Oh. Supersonic transformation. After joining Sega, the first project I worked on from the start, that'll be Sonic 3, right? Yeah, Sonic 3. Joined really late in my first year. It had only been about eight months, and during those eight months, there were a couple things I did before Sonic 3. So you did, you said Sonic 2, right? A, bit, a little bit of Sonic 2. As part of a practice and study tool for freshmen who had just joined Sega. So like some kind of training thing? Mega Drive Mini 2. Oh yeah, they dropped another thing. So it didn't come out before? So two people made well I can see. Yeah, that, that's believable. Golden X3. Oh yeah, Golden X is getting a remake, right? The new Sega initiative. I forgot about that. I'm waiting on that new crazy taxi. Don't don't let me down, Sega. I'm very happy when people tell me they really enjoy Sonic 3. It's a great game. Man, that rem very remembers like Naka and Yasuhara playing Sonic 1 and 2. Uh, they didn't worry about what the hardware could do. They simply wanted to make an epic Sonic series. 
I began developing Sonic 3 with the same... Man, that screen is horrible. God, I've never used the game game. But oh, man, that screen is horrible. Oh, my God. I mean, I guess it having a backlight made it amazing back in the 90s. But, like, God, the colors on that. Before making Nights into Dreams, we made Sonic and Knuckles. A pixel art game, of course. And suddenly, the Saturn became available, and it was 3D capable hardware. That's some nice cover art. I, I don't really play Knights, but that's a nice cover art. So this was like his first 3D experience, basically. Storytelling was only possible in small ways during the old Pixel days. Yeah, little cutscenes in like Sonic 3, where the Sega Saturn supported video. We hoped we could tell everyone a good story through a video game, okay? With Knights, we asked ourselves, how can we make an emotionally impactful story? And that process was the stepping stone that allowed us to make Sonic Adventure. Ah, and they're still using that purple border footage, but... SA1, man. SA1 is revolutionary. I don't care what anyone says. Impactful. This was during the time when Sonic's popularity declined. You mean like the mid-90s dry period? Oh, because they didn't make a game for the Saturn. Yeah, that makes sense. The extreme got cancelled, didn't it? We wanted to once again share the goodness of our Lord and Savior with the world. So I created Sonic Adventure. <laughs> Just like, single-handedly. I single-handedly made the Superior Adventure game. Like, Just knowing I, I created it. Yeah. Fuck the team, man. Like, I made that shit. All right, it became a bigger game than it was originally, and I was really happy that was so well supported by those fans. We support the fuck out of that shit. I remember. Well, I mean, I was like a baby, but. Dream Sonic's Mega Drive era. The first game was in Japan. The second was in America, in San Francisco. Sonic Adventure was also made in Japan and became a big hit. And SA2 was also America, right? For the second title, I wanted to incorporate more foreign culture to sell better in Europe and America. That's why I say too, we had the San Fran shit and all that. Yeah. Is that it? Oh, no. Okay. That's more. Dreamcast? Oh, this is when the Dreamcast failed. Oh, I remember that. We were making SA2 in San Fran. And we heard the news of Sega exiting the hardware business a little later in the day. After they came out in Japan. I mean, you heard it. They didn't tell you? Like, you just heard it when they announced it? We were really confident in SA2. That time, even within our team, we thought that if we released SA2, the Dreamcast would sell even more. I don't know if that helped. We are very confident that that would be a huge success. So it was a huge shock. I was hoping for more effort, honestly. Izuka, I feel you. We're always hoping for more effort. We are. Like, I, I get what you're saying. I get <laughs> uh, Unfortunately, we had a really small team in San Francisco. So we didn't talk about it. But Sega really be hinging on these small teams. At the time, Nako was his boss. In that sense, we had discussions about the company news. Of course, I was shocked when I heard that they were discontinuing the Dreamcast. But at the same time, the only thing I was thinking about was which hardware platform should I release the next Sonic on? Which hardware platform should I release the GOAT on? Went straight to the GameCube. No, I'm talking about the GOAT, not SA2 Battle. You know what I, you know what I meant. Comments, leave me alone. Leave me alone. You know what I meant. Okay. 
You know what I meant. Oh, you know what I meant. <laughs> Don't catch me out like that. Shit. This ain't the GOAT. <laughs> I returned to Japan in 2007. The Japanese Sonic team was creating new games according to the vision of whichever director was leading the individual project. We talk about the GOAT now? No, hey, what? Why are you skipping the goat for? What's going on? What? The fuck is this? Revisionist history. What the fuck? We were there. We were alive. You can't lie to us about the history. You can't lie to us about the history. A goat was skipped. The goat was skipped. The Billy goat was skipped. You can't just skip from 2002 to 2007, 2008. There was a goat that came out in that period. You can't miss the elephant in the room. You can't miss the goat in the room. Okay? You can't just skip that shit. What do you what do you think what what what, what do you think wasn't very what's he talking about? When you go back to Japan, each of those directors They better not be saying heroes is on good. Was creating song titles based on their own interpretations. What is he talking about? The, the storybook games? <laughs> so he put all that together and created a system. He must have been talking about storybook because he said Unleashed and then said other people were working on games. Like Kishimoto did storybook, right? So then he's come back and he's done Generations. That's what, that's what he's talking about. Okay, when I was working in Japan, I was overseeing Sonic games specifically. I covered management, quality control, <laughs> and was acting as a point of contact for Sega of America. But now it's a truly global experience and I'm in America. I came to the US to... So Boom gets, gets a mention but not the GOAT? <sighs> Revisionist history. Now I'm engaged with all aspects of the business, which is the difference between now and my time in Japan. It's not even, it's not like you didn't work on it, it's like you worked on it. What is the longest you've gone in your life without thinking about Sonic the Hedgehog? Two seconds. Nowadays I'm working on some sort of side job on Saturdays and Sundays. So there's not a whole day that I don't think about Sonic. Welcome to the club. We're all stuck here. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. I know you're very busy, and this is a long interview, so yeah. thank you very much. Thank you. They just danced around the goat, didn't they? Just danced around. The, okay. All right. Anyway, it was a decent interview. Nothing too, like... I guess for those who are like filthy casuals, there might be some serious amounts of news in there or things they didn't know. For those of us who really follow the shit, like, it's just like a summary of things you already pretty much knew, pretty much. So I was like, yeah, good for the casuals to like summarize in a little video to see how things went. But if you're going to summarize it for the casuals, you can't really be skipping the GOAT, right? Like, Izuka worked on the GOAT. He did the level design on the GOAT, you know? So it seems like a thing that like the first multiplayer game not including the port of SA2, which was obviously a, a port, you know, but a decent interview, you know. Anyway, we're coming up on May soon, you know, Knuckles TV show end of April, like, shit's heating up, and I'm looking forward to seeing more footage on Sonic and Shadow Generations. Uh, the Shadow portion, we'll see if the level design is any better than Cyberspace, and the, the Sonic portion... Will they unlock the frame rate, right? If you want my full thoughts on Sonic's X Shadow Generations, I got a video. Uh, this one here, uh, with the nice thumbnail, the beautiful thumbnail. You can check that one out if you want to see my full thoughts on the game, like break down my exact thoughts. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for this. Um, just slowly heating up. I'm looking forward to that E3 period, that June era, like Nintendo Direct season. You know, and I wonder how well Sonic X Challenge Generations is actually going to run. Because Switch 2 has gone, got delayed to 2025. So it's going to come out on Switch 1 first before the Switch 2 bump up. So those of you getting on Switch, good luck. That Shadow portion definitely going to be no higher than 30. Even the Generations portion, I don't even know based on the way they be pulling shit. So we'll find out. But yeah, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell. More content coming soon to the channel. But... That's all I have to say right now, so... Do me out!